Hey guys and welcome back to Gold Rush. So, I have not actually played since the slot system got changed, but uh, apparently they're like, oh yeah, we've fixed the slot system, so now you uh, you can get all your money back. Someone's whinging about the FOV. What is my FOV? It's 90. Like, what's wrong with 90? Like, 90 is like the same that I have for literally every game. Um... Oh, one type request. When season 2 has started, we've taken all your money and gold. Some of you were mad about it and would like to get it back. We've got a one time request for you. Would you like to get all your season 1 money and gold back and transfer it to season 2? Uh... No. No thank you. Thanks for asking though. Uh, and before comment section- ah! What are you doing? It would have made things so much quicker! Nah man. Like... Nee. Nee. I'm a knight who says meh. No, it's just one of those things. It's like, why? Why? What's the point? Wait, what ha I thought I was halfway up the freaking hill. God knows. God knows. I'm sure I was halfway up the hill. Uh. Yeah, I was about here because you can see my, my sweep that I was doing. Um, he says that they also made it so that this hardly gets stuck anymore, but no, it still seems to get stuck on topography, which is just odd. Um, oh. There we go. That's interesting though that they allowed people to uh, to keep their cash and stuff from season 2. Although, personally, it's like... <laughs> you guys were mad about this. It's like, yeah, because people whinge. Personally, I saw it as like... A great... Uh, a nice reset. Because there were so many bugs and things in season 1. That, uh, that caused me to have a lot more gold than I really should have. So it's like, nah, it's fine, whatever. Whatever, mate. Uh, so people were saying like, oh, Stadio, you know that you can just, uh, you can gather up all the money into bu all the gold into buckets before putting it through the wave table and then do it all at once and then sell it all? And it's like, yeah, I understand that I could do that, and that way I wouldn't get any money taken off me in gold. But at the end of the day, that's a bit, like... A bit of a douche move. I mean, I wouldn't do that if this was real life, so... Like, that's just a, that's just a way to gain this, game the system. It's like, that's not what I'm about, man. So I think we says that I was going to I was going to buy this claim, I think. Or was I gonna get yeah, I was gonna buy this claim because you can quite quickly get the the money back for it. So I think that was the plan. Or quite easily get the money back for it, because it's not actually that expensive. And then we can work on T3. Um because they did make it a lot cheaper. Uh because the T3 stuff doesn't take up slots anymore. Which is what they were saying about the the reworked the slots. So the only thing that's taking up slots are the machinery. So your T3 stuff ain't going to take up the slots, which is awesome because I didn't understand why it would. It's something that's basically necessary. And it's like yeah, well you can buy all this equipment, but you're going to have to spend an extra couple of million if you want to actually allow have it allowed on your land. It's like, that's just nonsense. Come on. That doesn't help anyone. Not even a good balancing decision. Right. So basically what we're doing is we're going in the arc and we're mining essentially all that we can in our arc before moving back one. And then we move back far enough that we can mine out the rest of the stuff. 
and then just keep doing that. So someone was asking, they're like, why are you mining out on average chunks? And that's because moving, um, in order to do anything else, I'll need to spend some time moving the, uh, the wash plant. And in doing that, we would lose more cash than, um, than we would make. Because while there's still stuff in reach of this arm, it makes sense for me to mine it without moving the wash plant, so. So that's the reasoning. I mean, we could still, we could move a little bit further away because we've still got all of this stretch here. So we can move a little bit further away into that side and still be able to reach that wash plant, uh, which is what we'll do once I've mined out everything that this excavator can reach currently. Okay. I'm stuck. I'm still stuck. Ah! There we go. Uh, right, I need to grab the gold, shove it in there. Put that in there. You love you. You love you. All right, you're finished. Eighty-nine ounces. What we get? We can get to ninety-nine ounces or a hundred, then I'll be happy. If any less, I probably won't be happy because we're already. Having some extremely, extremely suckage cleanouts on this. There we go, we got 100, so that's that's at least a 10 ounce cleanout. That's acceptable. Oh my god, just, just, just die in a fire. There's gonna be a horrible bucket, I can tell you right now. It takes so long to swing right round as well. Yeah, so I'm not too I'm not too fussed about a ten ounce clean out. That's that's distinctly average for this place. There's a lot of people saying that I should uh, I should ASAP move to the next um, the next claim because you can get like a ridiculous amount of gold. But the point is, if I'm going to be buying this claim, then I want to. Uh, if I'm going to be buying this claim, then I want to earn my money back off the claim. So I want to get, I want to get up to T4 before I start moving claims. Uh, T, uh, T4, I guess. I don't know. Can you say that the, there's an extra tier now that you can put like, uh, I don't know if it's double duplex jig, but you can, I think you can, I think, yeah, you can, you can do double duplex jig now. I don't know if it's more efficient or what. Um... Because there's, uh, I think it's the D Rocker that replaces a duplex jig. Or there's, there's one thing that replaces a duplex jig that you can get right now that was just that was added with the um, the drilling machine. But uh, yeah, I don't know if it's. I don't know if it's more efficient or not. I know that two duplex jigs are, well, one duplex jig is less efficient than what one used to be, but now two duplex jigs are, I think it's like, I think each one is about 75% efficiency on what they used to be. So with two, you're getting basically 1.5, 1 1.5 1 uh, times the efficiency that you used to, but with only one, you're getting, you're losing out on a quarter of what you used to. So. So it is beneficial to have the two. But not as beneficial as it would have been if you could have had the... You know what I mean. You know what I mean. No point belaboring the point. No point belaboring the point. Alright. 
right. Fifty eight percent. That must be just like total trash tier bedrock that I'm putting through right now. Funny thing is, <clears throat> as soon as I get over the halfway mark, I'll be swinging around the other way, which is going to be so weird because I've been swinging this way for so long. <laughs> I don't know, there's something so... I don't know if it says... I, I think it says about a million times. There's something so relaxing about playing this game. It's so chill. Oh, if you guys want a, a, a neighbour update, I'm sure I was talking about my neighbours in one of the previous videos. Um, so there was... Basically, we had a, a... A few days... Well, I say a few days. We had a week where I... Uh, well, I say I, we basically had to go and stay at my parents' house while they were on holiday because the noise from upstairs was that severe that I could not get to sleep. I, like, legit, it was noise from... I definitely did say it because I, I says it was noise from about 11pm until 7am until I, I finally went round and basically confronted them and I was like, what the fuck is going on? Um, Twitch was met with mild hostility, which I wasn't very happy about, but regardless, um, try not to incriminate myself. Uh, yeah, so we ended up staying at mom and dad's for a couple of nights. I say a couple of nights, six nights out of out of the week is uh, slightly more than a couple of nights. But but yeah, and then after we. Uh, I actually had to go to the, the police station for something unrelated and when I was there I says to the the lady who was there um, I basically told her the, the story and explained to her and she was like yeah just phone the police, like just phone us um, basically on the like non-emergency line I don't know if you guys get that in the states any, or uh, basically anywhere else I don't know why I always, I'm like you're either British or you're in the US no, um, I don't know if you guys have got that anywhere else or if that's just a British thing where we've got like a, an emergency number and then like a non-emergency number. So it's like 999 is the emergency number or uh, 101 is the non-emergency number. Um, anyway, I, just, I, I, I digress. Uh, so the lady was just like, yeah, just phone 101 and um, we'll get someone out. Fuck, I was only like 8 hours, so shit. Uh, and we'll get someone out and I was like, alright, okay, so... Uh, went home and it was just as bad. It was like, it was like they were having like around a 10 pin bowling in the fucking living room. Um, so I was like, right, okay, I'll phone 101, phone 101. Um, long story short, police ended up coming out. Uh, although they didn't tell us that they came out, so, mm, very annoyed. But police ended up coming out and speaking to them. And then since, there has been literally no one upstairs. Literally zero people. It's like, hmm, that's, that's weird. Nice, but weird. So, so yeah, the place has been really quiet and it's nice. And it's funny because the last time that this happened with the downstairs neighbour, um, it was basically the same thing except there was a load of shouting and stuff like that and like a load of banging. So we ended up phoning the, the actual emergency services because we thought that uh, like there was an argument going on or something downstairs. Phoned them up, they went on, they went downstairs and there was no argument or anything, but they spoke to them and didn't hear anything from them ever again. So it's like, Jesus, if I'd have known that then I wouldn't have had like, what was it about six months of torture from the downstairs neighbour and then like two months of torture from the upstairs neighbour? It's nuts. But it is good to know that if I ever have any other issues with neighbours making noise that the noise enforcement team won't come out and speak to them. So basically the civil side of it. Um, because they only deal with domestic amplified noise as it's called. Uh, which means like a TV or a radio or music or whatever. Um, they can't deal with footsteps and things like that whereas that's more of a... It's, it falls under an antisocial behaviour thing if you've spoke to them and they refuse to, to change their ways. As long, as long as you're not being unreasonable, obviously. Um, 
So yeah, had I, had I known that ages ago that, like, you could just phone up the phone up the police and they'd come out and sort it, then that would have made things so much easier. But yeah, I mean, half the problem was that feeling of um, being trapped in your own home, if that makes any sense. So it was like feeling like there is nothing that you can really do about something, a situation, especially a situation like that, doesn't help. So you're sitting there like, you're sitting there trying to just, for example, you're sitting eating your dinner, trying to enjoy something on the TV, and all you can hear is bum 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 from either upstairs or downstairs. It's like, surely, surely I have the right to a quiet enjoyment of my own home. And that was one of the things that really bugged me, is that it's like, no, technically you don't if you, you're just phoning up the council, but if you phone up the police, they're like, nah, you, you do. You actually do. So, no, it's nice to know that there's actually a remedy for it, because, like I said, that was one of the one of the biggest things, was feeling trapped. Feeling like you had nothing. Nothing that you could possibly do. So, uh, so yeah, that was, uh, pleasantly surprised that that's been sorted, but, I mean, it's always, you're always in that situation where, like, touch wood, um, yeah, I wonder if that's something that people say in other countries, I, I dig it, I'll get to that point in a bit, um, it's always one of those things that you're like, like, yeah, they're quiet for now, but how long is that gonna last? So, I mean, it took, it took about two months of quiet downstairs for me to be like, well, not two months, about a month, of quiet downstairs for me to be like, right, okay, yeah, like, downstairs is going to be quiet for a while until someone else moves in. Um, so it'll probably be about a month before I'm happy. A month of literally not hearing nothing from upstairs. Or the odd thing here and there before I'm happy that, like, I can chill out and not worry about it. But yeah, just nuts. Uh, oh, right, onto the, uh, the touch wood thing. Yeah, it's, um, it's like a saying that, I think it's a, a UK wide thing, but touch wood is like, fingers crossed, or, I don't, I don't know why touch wood, I don't know, if it makes no sense. I bet there's some sort of weird entomology behind that. En entomology? E etymology? I think it's etymology? Is entomology the study of the, the source of tree ants? Is it et etymology animal? I can't remember. The source, source of a word. The origin of a word. The study of the origin of words. I think it's etymology. Fuck knows, man. Fuck knows. I'm just a guy that plays shitty internet games. Uh, that being says, big changes in the YouTube sphere. Uh, I don't want to talk about it in this. <laughs> I'll talk about it in... I'm thinking about doing a YouTube Truths video on it, but it'll probably be up by the time you see this video if I decide to do it anyway. And if not, I'm probably just procrastinating. Alright, well, let's see what this does, because we're just about to end the episode anyway. Uh, 80... I wonder how much magnetite we're sitting on. I think we've got another bucket worth before we need to swap that out. Alright, so we're at 107 ounces, and I'm stuck in the hole. Um, uh. And? Ah, uh, 9 ounces. Alright guys, but unfortunately that is all we've got time for in this episode, so as always, thanks a lot for watching, I've been Steve, you've been awesome, I'll see you next time, bye bye.